Thank you to Audio for sponsoring this video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get started creating your own completely custom drag and drop transitions in DaVinci Resolve. Now that's very exciting, but I am also making this video now for a very specific reason. If you like this video or just the general topic of how you can create your own presets, plugins, templates, transitions, all of that in DaVinci Resolve, you absolutely can't miss my presentation this Friday at ResolveCon. I'll be live at ResolveCon out in Oregon, but the full live stream will be public and free over on Casey Ferris's channel. I'll be speaking Friday morning, giving a bit of a primer on the macro system, and I'll be showing off how to create your own transition title, generator, and effect for use on the edit page. It's gonna be jam-packed, we're gonna cover so much, but today uh, we are just talking about transitions. And of course, I will go into uh, more depth and detail then, uh, but today, uh, we're just gonna get you started, make your own transition. And ResolveCon, like this video, uh, is sponsored by Audio, but we'll we'll talk about them later. For now, transitions. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve on a timeline. I've got two clips and I want to transition between the two of them. Obviously, you've got all the great built-in transitions. And what you might not know is that if you scroll down far enough, you will get to Fusion Transitions. And if I grab something like just this Circles transition, drag that on, it gives this nice, you know, circle transition, but like a lot of fusion effects elsewhere, if I click that, open up the inspector, I have this little button here to open uh, that transition in the fusion page. And you see it has two media in notes, one for uh, nodes rather, one for each uh, clip that this is connected to. And they are both connected to this circles little group of nodes. And if I open that up, you can see exactly how this transition was made. That's very important to know because you need to know that when you create a preset to serve as a transition on the edit page, it has to have two open inputs that will connect uh, to each of those two, uh, you know, media in nodes, one being the first clip, one being the second. All you have to do is find some way to move from one to the other. So let's do that. I'm going back to the edit page. I'm actually getting rid of this transition completely because there's one really cool thing I want to show off. You can build a preset to serve as a transition like any way you would get into Resolve. You could even build a transition without like source footage, but it helps a lot of time. So uh, one really cool thing they added is that if you grab a plain cross dissolve, drop it on that transition point. Now that cross dissolve is not a, a fusion effect, but you can right click on that and go to convert to fusion cross dissolve. It will look exactly the same, it's just a fade. But now if I go into the inspector, I have that same button to open it in the fusion page. Um, this is where I start most of the time, um, just cause like, I know we're working as a transition. I can always hop back to the edit page if I want to preview it already applied. It's a nice place to start. And you can see we have media in one, which is that first clip, media in two, the second clip. And this cross dissolve is just a single dissolve node. And all it does is just fade from one to the other. Uh, a dissolve node, that's what it does. Uh, here we are transitioning from background to foreground um, using AM curves, which we've talked about before. I love it. We're gonna use it in just a second from scratch, so I won't go into too depth now. But what I am gonna do is just delete this cross dissolve. So all we're left with is just a single sort of connector coming from our first media in to our media out. That's not what we want. Uh, I'm just gonna straight disconnect that. No, I'm not. What I am gonna do is select that first media in, shift space to pull up this select tool browser, and I'm just gonna make a merge node. And then I'm gonna connect media in two. So now for the entire duration of this clip, it's only the second clip, which we also don't want. So what I'm gonna make is an absolute bare bones slide transition. This absolutely exists on the edit page, uh, but you know, I'm gonna show you off the process of making this as a transition, show off some more stuff, and then show you how to get it back to the edit page. Cause hey, anything you can do on the fusion page you can pretty much turn it into a transition. So let your imagination go wild. Um, maybe this is something I'll revisit, just like different styles of transition. That might be a good idea. I might do that. Let me know if you want that. For now, we're gonna keep it simple. And after this media in two, I'm just gonna create a straight transform node. And this center parameter is what we're gonna use to slide this clip on. And to do that, I'm gonna right click on center and go to modify with vector result. Boom, doesn't look like that did anything and it hasn't yet. <laughs> but if I hop over to modifiers, we'll see what this does. If I pull up this distance parameter just a little bit, you see it starts to slide, but we have this angle control as well, which is very useful. If I start to slide this, you'll see, oh, now we're sort of like pivoting around the center, but at that distance, this is very useful for like a wide range of graphic stuff. If you want some pivoting stuff, this is the best way to do it. I'm gonna double click to reset those. 
is all we want. We can keep this uh, angle set at zero. And if we pull this up, it'll slide to the right. But what we really want is this all the way off to the left, which will give us a starting value of 0.1. I'm going to copy that because after that, we're clicking on distance, right clicking and coming to modify with anim curves. Um, the really good thing this does is just go from like a point system to just a straight slider for this distance. And then we can come over to anim curves. We are setting that negative one as the offset. So that's where it will start. And this scale, oh, once I, once I click off, let it do its thing. So at frame zero, it's gonna be a, a value of negative one and the scale is set to one. So that will bring us back to a value of zero, which is center. Now this by itself is gross and linear and bad, I hate it. Uh, we didn't go over source, but it's transition by default. We're making a transition, so that works. But on curve, um, we could use some of the built-in easing options or, you know, hey, hop over to custom. I'm gonna click F to uh, flatten those and then select this first keyframe, click T to get this ease control, take that out up to an influence of about 50 and the in to an influence of about 70. This is sort of like my little special sauce for a lot of animation stuff. And now, oh yeah, ooh, it feels good. Sound effects always required. And hey, uh, we got a little slide transition. <laughs> you could spice this up, you could add rotates, you could add extra effects. Uh, spoiler alert, in my ResolveCon presentation, I am gonna add a little extra style here, but for now we're keeping this super simple. Next, we're gonna go over the absolute simplest way to get this transition over to the edit page to reuse as often as we want. But speaking of incredibly simple ways to make your videos better, uh, this video is sponsored by Audio. Audio is a music subscription service that is perfect for creators of all types. They've got music from hundreds of artists with new tracks added daily and a library of over 30,000 sound effects and the yearly Audio Pro plan gets you all of it. Check out this license. Uh, YouTube videos, uh, podcasts, video games, straight up films. <laughs> and I know a fair amount of my audience uh, either is or wants to be freelance editors. Uh, the Audio Pro plan does cover client work for companies that have up to 100 employees. If you need more than that, they always have uh, uh, enterprise pricing as well. They got you. And any of the assets you download during your subscription period are yours to continue to use forever, even if you cancel your subscription. That's all super cool, and I've barely talked uh, about the music yet. It's great. <laughs> Luckily, you can head right over to Audio to completely browse their library and use their really cool like sorting and filtering options completely for free. If you're interested in the Audio Pro plan or you just wanna learn more about audio in general, check out the link in the description. And if you use the code PATRICKS at checkout, you will get 70% off your first year of Audio Pro. As I've said, Audio has been an amazing supporter of the broader DaVinci Resolve community as a whole, thank you Audio for sponsoring this video. So we've got our super simple transition. What do we wanna do? Well, we need to make this a macro, uh, uh, kind of. We're gonna make something that, that works as a macro. On most macros, and like I'll show off in my presentation, the macro system lets you give sort of user control on the edit page, but for this basic slide, we don't really need all those extra options. But check out what I can do for something this simple. I'm gonna select both these nodes and it's a, a little finicky. I'm gonna select this merge node first and then uh, control select to select this transform node um, because we need to tell Resolve uh, to keep this uh, first background of the merge as the first input. It's a little complicated, but whether you're doing a macro or just this simpler way, make sure the node you select first is the one that connected to the media in node, that's important, or media in one node, that's important. But after that, I'm just gonna click control G, make that a little group. I'm gonna rename that to slide. And then I'm gonna right click and go to settings, save as. I've got a little folder. I'm gonna save this here, just slide.setting. I will save that. And then uh, in my effects library in Fusion, I'm gonna open up templates, edit. And here we see these categories, effects, generators, titles, transitions. I'm gonna open up transitions. And then if I navigate to this folder where I saved this uh, option, uh, sometimes you can drag it straight to this folder, but you can also come to these dots and click show folder. One or the other should work for you. Sometimes this can be a little finicky, but then I can just copy and paste this slide dot setting over. Uh, Resolve will think for a second, and then I should be able to go back to the edit page. Uh, I'm gonna copy my clips over here, get rid of this transition, and in my effects library, video transitions, uh, if I scroll, or I've got a lot of them, if I just search, 
for slide. Uh, we do see the ones that are included for resolve, but not the one we made. So I'm going to restart resolve real quick. I might be running into an issue um, since there's already a transition called slide. So I'll just call this SSC slide. Let's see what we get. I'll rename that. We'll see how resolve feels. And hey, SSC slide. Was that there before? I don't know. But hey, <laughs> drop it on as a transition and you've got your little slide. Stretch it out if you want it to take longer. You'll get that ease motion always. And boom, you've just made your first maybe transition. That's awesome. From here, you can really go anywhere. Of course, you have those two media in, those uh, inputs that you can like add effects to. You can modify those however you want, but you can also bring in anything else to be a part of your transition. You can use the 3D system in Fusion. You can use particles. You can bring in like, uh, you know, extra graphics and turn them into particles and have them raining down during your transition. Anything you want, you just do it. Make it in Fusion, see if it works. If it does, save it as a little drag and drop preset on the edit page. It's pretty cool. If you've just been dabbling in Fusion, I hope this gave you the confidence to dive in to this great world of creating your own presets, templates, uh, maybe even products. I have dozens of free presets on my site and a number of paid products as well. They're kind of made all like this. Some of them are just, you know, uh, a lot more stuff going on in Fusion. <laughs> I hope you liked it. Of course, if you want to learn more, don't miss my presentation this Friday. Um, even if you're watching this video after the fact, there should be a replay either on Casey's channel or maybe on mine. We'll see how that goes. But really, don't miss ResolveCon. It's going to be a, a ton of fun. Cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.